Hello, we will be presenting the institutional demo for Stanford University. Stanford University Library is responsible for many applications that use Blacklight and related systems, such as our library catalog that uses Blacklight, our geospatial discovery system that uses GeoBlacklight, several different Spotlight applications, and different ArcLight applications. Our library catalog called SearchWorks is implemented using Blacklight. Several of our enhancements to SearchWorks at this year and the past year have to do with Stanford University's adoption of Folio as a central open, open source library services platform. We had to rewrite several areas in SearchWorks in order to be able to integrate API calls to Folio, update of the internal logic that SearchWorks relied on for request fulfillment, and retrieving information from the index that now includes Folio information. We also updated the UI in several places, including integrating Folio information into the librarian view and displaying bandwidths in a way that we deemed to be more user-friendly. So we'll go through a few examples of the UI updates that we made. For this particular item, if we went to see the librarian view, we now have incorporated various levels of information from Folio, including the item and holdings information directly from Folio, and a fuller view of the JSON that we get from Folio directly. This has been very helpful for our librarians and catalogers. Here's an example of an item that is a bound width item. A bound width is a particular physical way of binding together multiple articles or resources. And so this record uh, shows the bound width item. And in the left hand corner, you can see the items that are included in this bound width or bound with it. If you clicked on the first one, some factors affecting the cooking of a toll, it will open up the record that is related to this bound width and shows the relationships, the bound width and shelving relationships between that item and the parent record. I will now hand it off to Nikki to talk about Earthworks. Hi, my name is Nikki. As part of the team on the most recent Earthworks work cycle, Earthworks is the name of Stanford's GeoBlacklight site. We did a number of upgrades during this work cycle. The first part of the work cycle focused pretty heavily on upgrading GeoBlacklight to Blacklight 8. Work to do this included efforts to modernize the JavaScript and get rid of sprockets, moving to import maps and prop shaft, moving all the partials in GeoBlacklight to view components, and upgrading to Bootstrap 5. The second part of the work cycle focused on moving to the latest version of Geo Blacklight and Blacklight 8 and Bootstrap 5, and doing an entire site refactor based on work done by our UX designer, Darcy. The homepage can be seen on the right side of your screen. It's the one with the green header. Um, as you can see, we've updated it to focus on two, the two types of data we have the most of. Uh, maps and geospatial data sets. This is the new item page. We updated it so that the header bar would have certain tools. Bookmark, site, and email got moved into the header where it used to be a part of the sidebar. This change actually got done in Blacklight 8 and works the same way as show tools do with a different named function. So any user can add whatever components or partials to the header in the catalog controller. Now I'll hand off to Corey to talk about Spotlight. Thanks, Nikki. Um, I'm Corey Lown, and I'm going to talk about our instances of Spotlight and Arclight, which are both based on Blacklight. Um, first is Spotlight, which is a Blacklight-based engine for creating digital uh, apps that can, can create digital exhibits. Um, we have two Spotlight-based applications at Stanford. One is our Exhibits app, also called Spotlight at Stanford. Uh, we currently have 153 published exhibits in this app. It's on Spotlight 4, uh, Blacklight 7, Bootstrap 4, and Rails 7.2. Uh, we're in the middle of a work cycle to bring some of these dependencies more up to date, and I'll talk about that more later. 
The other spotlight instance at Stanford is Digital Library of the Middle East, or DLME. Uh, it brings together Middle Eastern and North African collections from a wide range of cultural heritage institutions. For Spotlight at Stanford, uh, we're currently in a work cycle uh, with a focus on the design and adding features. Um, we're also doing some major updates in Spotlight core to address out-of-date dependencies, um, add features, and improve accessibility. Uh, well, here's some more detail about work going on in Spotlight, the, the, the engine that provides the digital exhibit functionality. Um, the community has started uh, quarterly community calls again, um, and there's been more regular activity on the Code for Lib Spotlight development Slack channel. Uh, as part of our current work cycle at Stanford, we're working on updating Spotlight uh, for better support for Blacklight 8, Bootstrap 5, latest versions of Rails, and um, trying to wrangle some of the newer JavaScript asset delivery tools uh, coming from Rails like PropShaft. Uh, we're also adding some new features and particularly around some accessibility improvements. So we're adding support for exhibit creators to manage alt text for embedded images. Now I'm going to switch and talk about Arclight, which is another Blacklight based engine, and it's designed to provide a discovery of archival material, particularly described by EAD. Um, the last community sprint on Arclight was in late 2023, and in that uh, sprint, we addressed some bugs and were also able to incorporate into Arclight Core some customizations and features that had been implemented locally by adopters of Arclight that proved to be popular. Um, we have two Arclight-based applications running at Stanford. One is um, archival collections at Stanford, which is currently in public beta. It's on Blacklight 8, Bootstrap 5, Rails 7, 1. Uh, we also host the Taubay Archive of the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg, uh, also called Virtual Tribunals. Um, this is on Blacklight 8, Bootstrap 5, and Rails 7, 1. Uh, for archival collections at Stanford, uh, we launched the public beta in mid-2024, and our target is to put this into production in mid-2025. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any one of us on Slack, and thank you.